attend step of subsynchronous vibration trip on steam turbine. This is the case study of EGAN South Bangkok Power Plant and I'm working in the steam turbine department of Electricity Generating Authority of Thailand or we call EGAN. And why this is very important for the subsynchronous vibration trip problem? Because when it come up from alarm to the trip, it just only takes two minutes and can make the unit trip right away at that time. And operator cannot do anything at that time. Just the alarm and go to the trip. And it can come up uh, when it has rubbing. So internal part of steam turbine can make it rubbing. So I'm gonna bring you to five outlines here. The first one is the event overview. I will talk about the symptom of the problem. And the next one, introduction. I will talk about the background, a little bit of history record, uh, the arrangement of steam turbine, and next, methods. This is the long story that we correct the problem step by step. Next, I'm going to wrap up the results and conclusions. First, we start with the event overview. In March 15, 2008, you can see from the trend here, here show the overall vibration. When it happened from here, it's not alarmed yet because the alarm is around 200 micron here. So when it come up here, it just take only few minutes and it can go up suddenly to trip turbine from the subsynchronous problem. This is go over the 225 micron trip setting. At that time, it's around like 300, or five, uh, 300 micron. from here and I bring you to the introduction. This is the steam turbine um, at the South Bangkok which had the COD commercial operation date in 1995 so around 15 years old now and it's part seven outlets already and the arrangement is comprised of two gas turbine and one steam turbine. The capacity of steam turbine itself is 115 megawatt. And the bearing that support the steam turbine right here is bearing one and bearing number two. And the type is the tilting pad bearing from Kingsbury Maker. Uh, this can call pivoted uh, shoe, pivoted shoe journal bearing, and it's compiled of four pads and one pad down here. All the pads have the pivoted shoe installed, and I will talk a bit, uh, talk uh, about the uh, bearing later in the next talk. And this is just the ordinary standard of our condition monitoring. Um, actually, this is the overall sharp vibration that I just said before. Um, the trip setting is around 225 micron. And from this one, we cannot tell the subsynchronous vibration problem occur in our equipment, in our steam turbine. And other uh, is like the temperature from bearing metal to oil and generator cooling. Uh, for example, the other condition monitoring. So we have to tell with the uh, spectrum vibration system. Our, our, our vibration team come after the problem occur and they capture the vibration at the time that it happened. They do the test again and they can capture um, the subsequent by spectrum vibration system. Um, at that time that they capture is just from the subsequent that they get is just only 10 micron and it can shoot up to 75 micron in few minutes. And you can see this is only 
few examples that many factors influence the tough revision shooting. The first one is when we are raising the megawa over here and when the differential expansion is abnormal over here, it can make the variation at bearing number one and number two raising here and shoot up in a few minutes. And also other fac factors also influence this variation shooting. Then our vibration team have to capture by the spray pump vibration system and they can capture from here before the event. Before the event is around here, it's only 10 micron or subsynchronous. And then after that, during the event, they can capture the magnitude is up to 75 here. So actually, the subsynchronous, we will know this word from the laboratory. When the um, uh, OEMs manufacture steam turbine, they will do um, subsynchronous vibration lab test. So in our normal condition, our normal operation cannot, uh, cannot capture it. From this time, because of we have limit of time, so we have to choose from three options to correct. And and our vibration team con conclude that is possibly be fluid in the instability. So we have three options here. The first one is six day compromise balancing, or eight days bearing inspection, or the last one. This is for adjusting or I can say fine tuning correcting method. So we choose the first one. Um, in compromise balancing, we do three runs balancing. We analyze the vectors of balancing. But when we start it out, it's still it's effective, but it's still not enough yet. Because from the trend, it can suddenly shooting anytime. So we also try adjusting the look or temperature also, but it still did not work uh, enough. So we have to shut it down and do bearing inspection. And at that time, the pilot shoe over here, we have seen the wear on the shoe. We have to replace it all and um, install it again, do constant city setting, bad bit uh, surface clean. And when, it's uh, when we test, it can supply higher load, can run longer, but it still have the problem from rubbing. So we come up to the meeting and at that time we have to decide to do the major overhaul of the steam turbine to correct all the parts that rubbing inside that we haven't seen. This is take us 45 days of the overhaul. All correcting activities, we first start with the front casing way and balancing. We first measure and balancing at the front of casing. We use the hydraulic to lift the casing both sides one by one and take the data and calculate the unbalancing is come up 65%. Then the criteria from the GE energy is only 10%. So we have to, from the calculation, we have to grind the shell arm key out. 1.7 mm and make the unbalancing go down to 10%. So when we finish next, we have to do decreasing all large area of wrapping because of at the event, they have some uh, my of uh, water induction. We have seen some water inside too. So it's called like a large area of rubbing here. We have to grind it out and welding it again and grind it again to make it smooth. And this one also is, this is the anchor ball hole at the LP hood casing. We also have to expand it to make it, uh, when it expand, when it's operated, have to expand fully. <coughs> And this one, we also have found the um, five uh, foundation level. The right side is lower than left side, 2.7 mils. But at that time, we have no time to uh, 
correct this thing. We just monitor it and have to see that it's worse or it's still constant, but it's still constant. You can see it can supply the magnitude, larger magnitude of subchinconal. And the steam turbine can supply more load at the 87% load. And we still need more fine tuning. We decreasing from 49 to 45 degree to make more viscosity to the loop eye, and then uh, the bearing will more stable when they move when they rotate. And from 45.5 to 45 degree that we decrease, we find that the vibration is decreasing immediately, as you can see here. But it still have some subsynchronous. It's not gone yet. So I want to update you the results just beginning of this month. We have MI outage, just part. Uh, and we want we try to correct the last possible cause in fishbone diagram that we do root cause analysis. The last one is the bearing load. We have to correct this bearing load. By we analyze by the uh, chart position plot here. This is the chart position from bearing number one at the chart uh, at the position of bearing number one, number two that support the turbine, and bearing number three and four that support. The then we have to correct the deflection curve here. We have to lift the uh, bearing number three support up. And then you can see from the bearing load in the red letter, uh, it can supply, it can distribute more the power plant. So this is the rough guidelines. So I I wish that you can apply in your power plant too. When it appears just a little turbine, is the condition of turbine is normal. But if from this case, it plays 80 micron at the 87% load. Around that is abnormal. But if only just 10 micron can make the turbine trip, it's more severe case. And from the turbine condition, we can get to the action from here. If it's normal, you can monitor it and planning for the next outdate correction. But if it's abnormal, we have three choices. As I just said before, loop oil temperature adjusting, just try to find tuning before. So thank you for your kind attention and feel free to ask the question. Our time is up, but uh, it's a real mechanical uh, problem uh, for me. So uh, please.